Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching Today I Found Out, and in the video today, we're looking at whether more people are really killed by vending machines than sharks. Just before we get started, I do want to give a plug to another friend of this channel, which is Picture the Recipe. They give easy to follow cooking tutorials that show you how to make delicious food with easy to follow steps. This isn't a paid sponsor spot or anything like that. They're just a friend of our channel, and we'd like you to go and check them out and subscribe. There is a link in the description below. So, as we've discussed at length in another video, sharks, contrary to their fearsome reputation, rarely attack, let alone kill humans. It would seem that they don't deem us suitable prey, though it seemingly has little to do with taste, as is commonly stated. You can find a link to our video, Do Sharks Really Not Like the Taste of Humans, in the description below. But is nature's supposed perfect killing machine really outclassed by humble vending machines when it comes to the number of humans that are killed every year? Despite the contents of vending machines, probably killing millions of people over time, when talking about a vending machine directly killing humans, as far as we can tell, most every source claiming that vending machines kill more humans per year than sharks, including our past selves by the way, cite a single report as their source. Now, This report was published by the Consumer Product Safety Commission in 1995, which notably deals exclusively with American deaths via vending machines. This comprehensive review of available data states that from 1978 to 1995, a total of 37 Americans were killed by falling vending machines, meaning a little over two deaths per year. As a result of this data, warning labels began adorning most vending machines, cautioning consumers that rocking or tilting a vending machine may cause it to dole out death instead of Twinkies, although the label probably actually said something different. Since that time, the statistic has been quoted across the news and internet and is often extrapolated upon to suggest that the odds of being killed by a vending machine anywhere in the world is more than being killed by a shark, despite the report only dealing in American deaths. Now, on the one hand, it is true that during that span discussed, at least statistically, Americans were more likely to be killed by vending machines than sharks, because on average, slightly less than one American every year was killed by a shark. But there are a number of problems with this comparison. First, someone sitting in the middle of Oklahoma has zero chance of being killed by a shark in any given moment, or zero for their entire lives if they never travel to the ocean or fall into an aquarium shark tank. This means that the the 1 in 400 million statistic that you often hear is not actually correct for them. Likewise, the Floridian, who regularly surfs at the beach, has greater odds of dying from a shark attack than the stated average, though they are still amazingly low odds. Specifically, one's exposure to, and specific chosen interaction with, vending machines further muddies the water here. Some people almost never use them, and others use them daily. Even for those that use them regularly, if they aren't physically strong enough to rock the vending machine, which is why, by the way, it's amazingly rare for women and children to die this way, the odds of death plummet even beyond its existing minuscule amount. Thus, on the whole, the statement you are more likely to be killed by a vending machine than a shark isn't really terribly meaningful on its face. Beyond such minutiae, there is something else that makes this statement indeterminate, even in the general case. You see, as noted, pretty much everyone seems to be using data from before certain safety measures were implemented in vending machines. Along with warnings that vending machines can cause serious injury or kill if tipped, being placed on nearly every modern vending machine produced today, most also have anti-vandalism technology built in, most pertinent to the topic at hand, mechanisms that prevent them from being tipped over at all, such as bolting them to the floor. Given this, you might at this point be wondering, well, how many people have vending machines killed in recent years? Well, that's a very tricky question to answer, as while sharks killing humans is generally front page news, and otherwise well documented by various data collecting agencies, vending machine deaths just aren't, whether because they aren't happening anymore, or because, well, nobody cares. That said, when not citing that aforementioned 1995 report, many discussing vending machine deaths and injuries today quote data from the National Electric Electronic Injury Surveillance System maintained by the Consumer Product Safety Commission. This system tracks hospital reports and uses them to calculate an estimated risk of injury posed by various consumer products. 
According to the NEISS, between 2002 and 2015, vending machines killed roughly four Americans per year, and an average of 1,730 vending machine-related injuries were reported per year. This is a figure that, if correct, means that since the late 20th century, vending machines have either gotten twice as deadly despite the implementation of the warnings and additional anti-tipping mechanisms, or the number was previously significantly under-recorded. Needless to say, this didn't sit very well with us here at Today I Found Out, so we paused over the data a little bit more. What we found was that these oft-quoted numbers appear to be inflated on their face, primarily due to the extremely broad brush they used in connecting vending machines to death and injury. You see, the statistics recorded anyone who died while interacting with a vending machine, it didn't matter if the vending machine was directly involved. For example, let's consider the year of 2015, where the NEISS shows, via extrapolating using the sample data, not unlike how Nielsen's handles TV show ratings, a total of 2,206 Americans were injured in some way connected to a vending machine. Looking at the 42 available case files for that year, you'll notice that a lot of the injuries weren't even by the vending machines themselves. To wit, our personal favorite vending machine-related injury for its sheer bizarreness is, and we really can't make this stuff up, 11-year-old female, angry at residential treatment center, climbed on vending machine, found screws, put six screws in vagina, pieces of rubber in rectum. This resulted in a listed injury of FBS, whatever that means. Because this is included in the vending machine injury death data dump, news and other sources quoting these numbers are likewise including it, despite that it arguably shouldn't really count in the way vending machine injuries are usually discussed. Or how about the 43-year-old man who pulled his bag bending down to get a soda? It's in there too, among many, many others like it. And in case you think that we're just cherry-picking here, please do go through the data yourself if you don't believe us. There really are a large number of cases like this. But we have to be totally fair to the NEISS here, because they're not the ones misinterpreting the data. They are simply providing it, with those reporting on it tending to misconstrue the data. If you go run the searches, you'll also find matches included that you might not have previously considered a vending machine, though they technically are. Like the 47-year-old male at the casino who vigorously played a digital bingo casino slot machine and passed out from heart syncope. He ended up receiving a facial laceration from the machine. On a similar note, 66-year-old female was at casino and her chronic shoulder pain exacerbated while playing on the slot machine. This resulted in, to quote, pain. Interestingly enough, casino slot machine injuries, primarily concerning the elderly, actually seem to comprise the majority of cases of vending machine-related injuries in just about every year we looked at. In most instances, these are seemingly just these individuals exacerbating existing injuries or experiencing chest pains while operating the slot machines, which again are included in the data as vending machine injuries. The other common injury that we see is them simply passing out and striking themselves on the machine. On that note, perhaps unsurprisingly, given implemented safety measures in most modern vending machines, the available case files seem to show that many more people are injured today falling into vending machines than are injured by vending machines falling onto them. This is contrary to the perception most people have of vending machine injuries. For example, in 2015, about a quarter of the vending machine injuries listed that year were caused by people tripping or otherwise falling into vending machines. For comparison's sake, there's only one cited example of a person having a vending machine fall on top of them that year, which from all years looked at seems to be typical of how rare it is these days. The report stated, 42-year-old male had soda machine fall onto him and lacerated knee. It's also worth noting that if you take into account the number number of people who were injured by punching or kicking vending machines. Using these statistics, similar to how many people quote the vending machine shark deaths one, you were statistically four times more likely in 2015 to be hurt trying to attack a vending machine than you were by it falling on you. Many more injuries also seem to occur via people trying to reach their hands and feet inside the machine and getting cut. So, after a deep dive on the data covering the 21st century, how many actual deaths were caused by vending machines after one filters out things like someone having a heart attack or something like that while they happen to be interacting with a vending machine? It turns out, according to the NEISS archives, which had the most comprehensive set of data on the subject we could find, it would seem this virtually never happens anymore, and certainly not greater than the near one person per year dying from shark attacks in the United States. However, that has to be taken with a rather massive grain of salt because even the NEISS doesn't keep a comprehensive record, just a sample set of cases that are then used to extrapolate from once sufficient data has been collected. And when dealing with a sample of greater or less than one per year, it doesn't take much to surpass it. 
In the end, few news sources or data compilers keep tabs on rogue vending machine injuries or even deaths. And when they do mention it, as far as we can find, they almost exclusively drag up the same aforementioned study from 1995 or quote the NEISS broad statistics without looking into what the NEISS data dumps are actually reporting. Among the few exceptions we found to this, they universally went with even older data, such as an article written in 2015 published in The Guardian discussing research showing that of 15 people killed by vending machines over an indeterminate period, all but one were male, suggesting that men are apparently vending machines' preferred prey. However, despite that article being published in 2015, the studies they cite as primary sources for their statements were published in 1992 and 1988. As a result, while we can say with reasonable confidence that on average each year about one American is killed by a shark, we cannot definitively compare this to vending machine deaths because the hard data simply isn't there anymore to support claims either way. Although given the data was there in the late 20th century, and as a result of some of it, various safety measures were put in place to prevent a vending machine causing a human death, it seems probable that the just over two deaths per year in America from vending machines number has probably declined since. This may account for the complete lack of hard data or even news reports in our searches concerning vending machines killing humans in the 21st century. And it seems that these statistics are unlikely to change any time in the near future, except maybe in 10 years or so when the machines finally gain sentience and they use the ultimate killer of the vending machine to seek revenge on us all. Either way, such broad statistics are somewhat meaningless the way they are typically applied, with this excellent XKCD comic coming to mind, given how this sort of data is often thrown about. If you want to look at more comics like that, please do click the link in the description below. And now for some bonus facts. Speaking of broad spectrum statistics thrown around willy nilly, according to the National Safety Council, if you're an American, you have a 1 in 7 chance of dying of heart disease and cancer. We specifically quote that as they used and instead of or, which seems a bit odd. Are 1 in 7 people really simultaneously dying of heart disease and cancer at the same time? Is this cancer resulting in the ultimate stoppage of the heart, thus being counted as heart disease? And if so, why isn't heart disease listed anywhere else in their top 25 most likely ways you'll die chart? This this all leads us to the conclusion that they probably meant or. And now for another bonus fact. Well, moving on and next up their list is chronic lower respiratory disease at 1 in 28. Intentional self-harm rings in sadly at number 3 with 1 in 95, followed closely by unintentional poisoning and exposure to noxious substances at 1 in 96. Rounding out the top 5 is motor vehicle crashes at 1 in 114. And now for another bonus fact. Interestingly, two animal-related deaths also pop up in the top 25 most likely ways you'll die in America. Which with 1 in 63,225 being killed by hornets, wasps, and bees, though of course this one requires that you're allergic to such things in the first place. The one you don't have to be allergic to is dogs ringing in at number 23, resulting in 1 in 112,400 deaths via biting. Man's best friend indeed. So I really hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, please do hit the thumbs up button and do not forget to subscribe. Also, if you're looking for something else to subscribe to, please do go check out Picture the Recipe. They're friends of this channel. They do recipes which are really easy to follow and you can make some great stuff. So please do click that link in the description below and check out Picture the Recipe. Don't forget to subscribe to them as well. And thank you for watching.